one way that chemical formulas can be determined is by carrying out an analysis of the elements. So for example, let's say that we analyze a compound and it turns out to be 81.7% carbon and 18.3% hydrogen. And these are percentages by mass. In order to translate that into a chemical formula, we're going to start by assuming we have 100 grams of this compound because then the percentages are simply the same number in grams. So 81.71 grams of carbon, we can turn that into moles of carbon using the molar mass. From the periodic table, 12.01 grams of carbon is one mole of carbon. And so multiplying is going to give you, and in a problem like this one, you want to carry out and leave many decimal places. We're not worried about sig figs in a problem like this. We're trying to find a ratio of the atoms that make up the chemical formula. So we do the same thing with hydrogen. 1.01 grams of hydrogen is the value from the periodic table. And so we get 18.1089 moles of hydrogen. Notice you want at least four or five decimal places because you don't want to get a rounding error in a problem like this. So starting from percent, we turn them into grams. Once we have grams, we use the periodic table to turn them into moles. And now once we have moles, the moles are directly related to the subscripts in the chemical formula. But what we want is the smallest whole number ratio. So when you have a number such as 6.8 and 18.1, to find the smallest whole number ratio, what you want to do is divide by whatever number is the smallest. In this case, the moles of carbon are the smallest. So this is going to give us 1 mole of carbon and 2.66 moles of hydrogen. Or if we write that as a formula, it would be C with a subscript 1, H with a subscript of 2.66. We've kept the ratio between the numbers the same, but now we've almost got them into small whole numbers. 2.66 is too far away to round that to a 3, and 2.66, if you remember your fractions, that's basically 2 and 2 thirds, or 8 thirds. So sometimes in a problem you'll end up with whole numbers at this point, but if not, you may have to multiply by small numbers in order to get them into all whole numbers. So in this example, we would have to multiply everything by 3. So if I take C1H 8 thirds and multiply each subscript by 3, it's going to give me a final answer of 3 carbons for every 8 hydrogens.